So the lab is basically a psychology based lab. So what we do um, is we study associative learning and uh, decision making. Um, uh, I think of it as sort of judgment um, and the neural circuits that sort of that mediate those processes. There's good evidence that addictive drugs generally and psychostimulants in particular cause long-lasting changes in these brain areas. Uh, and so it's sort of a, a reasonable hypothesis to say that at least part of what's reflected in addiction is due to drug-induced changes in these areas and how they do their job, right? So if we can understand their basic job better, how they do that job, then we can understand how drug-induced changes might modify that. And so we study rats, uh, not because we're fundamentally interested in what rats do, but because they provide a, a nice model system for humans. Uh, a lot of the same neural circuits exist in, uh, in rodent species that are present in, in uh, humans and also monkeys. The lab's heavily focused on having really good behaviors that isolate uh, cognitive functions that we think are important. Uh, and then we study the brain circuits that mediate these cognitive functions using uh, single year recording where we record neural activity from, uh, uh, from, from brains of awake behaving animals. Um, and we combine that with uh, lesions, uh, pharmacological manipulations, and now we're starting to get into some uh, fancier approaches that use uh, some of these genetic tools that people have uh, developed. But really the magic in the lab, I think, uh, is the behaviors that we develop. This is a surgical suite where we do electrode implantations, uh, you know, lesions, things like that. This is Dr. Mike McDonald, postdoc extraordinaire on the job market, in case anybody wants to hire him. <laughs> um, and then the rest of the lab uh, is divided up into little rooms that uh, we do the behavioral testing in. So this is just some examples of our equipment. So a lot of the tests we do involve uh, uh, tasks the animals do using odors. Odors are something rats are really good at using. Um, and so this is uh, an apparatus that allows us to deliver odors in a really controlled way and, and use those as cues in different tasks. Uh, and then the other thing we're doing in addition to the single unit recording is uh, we started to do something called uh, fast scan cyclic voltometry, which is uh, doing it in these boxes. Again, the behaviors are all the same. It's just the, the, the computers below that measure signals that would be different. In this case, uh, we're not recording single unit activity. We're actually recording uh, dopamine release. So it's a way to record dopamine release in real time that uh, has sort of been an uh, exciting addition to behavioral neuroscience. So, so we started to pick this up in the lab. The green waveform is uh, uh, what we see when we isolate it. Uh, when we've isolated a dopamine neuron, has sort of an upward deflection initially and then sort of wide polyphasic kind of shape. Uh, and that's uh, notable. We don't see very many of those. We typically get one, uh, maybe one per rat per week in the experiment. And uh, um, so it's exciting when we see them. Uh, and the point of the experiment is really to record those neurons and to uh, ask specifically how the firing of those neurons changes um, uh, when we give the animals uh, cues that have not been directly paired with reward that predict reward through inference and to see what they, uh, whether they respond to that or not. So this would test an interesting idea uh, in the field that the dopamine neurons, uh, in theory, shouldn't really know about rewards that have not been directly experienced. And so we, we think that might not be correct, and so this will allow us to test that hypothesis.